Hello everyone and welcome to Outside. The series, of course, we're going outside zombies maps such as Revelations, which we have on our play today. I am super excited for that. Oh I can't wait to what see like I details done? like what's in that house and things like this guy Please. right here. It's okay. And if you are too, leave a like down below. It helps me out a ton. And of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. But let's get right into it. I'm using a mod menu called Amethyst, and it allows me to do things such as this. Just hop right on outside the map, man. And there is some pretty cool details in this building, actually. It's very orange, very smoky, but very, very well modeled. And it looks like this area is shared by two windows. So this one right here out back, which is not very common for Black Ops 3 at all. This was used a lot in Black Ops 1 and in Black Ops 2 to allow for zombies to decide which direction they want a path to when they spawn in a central location in an area like this. And perhaps that's being used here as well. So zombies could decide whether they want to go out this way towards somebody jumping off here or go out towards spawn over here. And if we go through this window and across the way, we got another one. And in here, it's basically just like a little garden hut, right? We got uh, stuff, a hammer, sick. Oh, we can actually see through the map right there. Can you see that from inside the... You can totally see that from inside the map. Wow. Anyway, continuing onward, let's go ahead and check out this area. It's like a little garden, it looks like. I'm assuming zombies spawn somewhere here for it. And we got more area here, which I know... I think if I jump on this, I fall through. No? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, a lot of this kind of just has partial collision, and you can fall through a decent bit of it. But this area here does have three windows. There's that one that we just went through. And then there's this one over here, which just goes right out back to spawn. It's uh, It doesn't seem like it has a ton of detail, just kind of another little shack again with some nails, a hammer, that kind of stuff. Garden supplies and all of that. But in the middle is this window, which is basically just like a little house, right, I think? I mean, it's the part of this house out here that's still together, right? The one that you go through here with this door towards the jump pad. And inside of it, we can see that the devs are using that trick that I think first appeared in Black Ops 2, where the painting is off the wall slightly. And I believe this is for a couple of reasons. First, it's easier to place that way. They don't have to worry about it being completely flush, because no one's going to notice. And second, it also makes it bigger. It feels like it's closer to you than the wall behind it is. It adds a bit of depth. And I believe, I think the first time I saw that was in Black Ops 2 Buried, but it could have been somewhere else earlier than that. Anyway, there's a bit more in this building on this table. We have the placeholder newspaper that we saw in Shadows of Evil. But other than that, it seems like that's it for this area, although we do have a nice bottle of Merlot chilling right here. Fantastic. And I mean, I suppose while we're in this area, we might as well check out things like this little shed here. Although I don't, yeah, there's not, there's not much modeling to it, right? But it's kind of interesting, and there is collision here, so we can walk in it. And, of course, there's this broken house up here, which does not have collision. But we can take a quick little look at it with no clip. There's not much going on with it. Of course, there's, like, basically no modeling to it whatsoever. Although, it is very well textured because, well, Black Ops 3. And lastly, for the left side of spawn here, we got this little house chilling up on a rock. I've always wondered, is there anything inside of this house? And it turns out, no. There's absolutely nothing, not a single model and there's not even texture for the interior walls. But I suppose that makes sense. Of course, you would never be able to see it, and the windows themselves are not transparent. And heading to the other side of spawn, we got this window to hop into. It looks like we just have a whole bunch of, like, storage going on, and this is actually two windows as well. But yeah, just a whole bunch of storage, more gas cans, and a little place for zombies to spawn around the corner, but that's about it. But around the left side of this house, we have our first little Easter egg to check out, and that's these two gravestones right here, which when we get nice and close to them, we can see that they read Takio Masaki and Edward Richtofen, which is just super cool, man. I didn't know this was here for the longest time, and you can see that somebody even placed flowers on Richtofen's grave, which I don't really know who that would be. Yeah, so let me know down in the comment section who you guys think would place these flowers here at Richtofen's grave, like storyline wise, right? I can't think of anybody. Did Richtofen have, like, a secret admirer? I I, I really don't know. And if, instead of going to the left, of course, we have the right here. If we I open the door... nothing of value but for my mortal soul. By the door, of course, we have another jump pad, but we also have another window right here. Let's go ahead, hop on into it. And this probably is the most interesting so far. So we got, like, this massive church, which to me, at least, like, from these, like, mosaic paintings here, 
Reminds me a lot of the Origins Church. I know it's clearly not supposed to be that church, but man, does it still make me feel that way. And we also have this little steeple up here too. Can we can we walk in it? Eh, kinda. It's filled with a barrier, so not not really, but we can stand here at the very least. And we can even hop out on the roof here and take a walk. It seems like there actually is no barrier on top of the roof. It's just straight collision with the roof or no collision with the roof, as you can see right there on that side. Which is strange, right? Because if we go over to here, we can see there is a barrier here, which is higher than the roof of that building. And as it turns out, we can do the same thing with this building right over here. We can just pop on down and we do have collision with the rooftop. There is no invisible barrier, unlike this one over here, which just has a big old chunk of a barrier on top of it, preventing any kind of glitches. And from up top here, we get a nice view at both these two graves that we looked at already and those two over there, which if we move on in close, we can see are for Tank Dempsey and Nikolai Belinsky. I'm sure most of you guys know that stuff is there and that of course ties into the storyline, right? These are the four premise characters who were killed by the four characters that we're playing now here in Agartha, trying to, you know, reclaim our world from, uh, where is he? That guy. Yo, those guys right there. The Shadow Man and his Apothecan servants, I think. Is that how the storyline goes? As you guys know, I'm not a huge storyline guy, so let me know down in the comments section if you know more than me, but I believe that's what's going on here. And of course, these are our fallen characters that we have taken out one by one through the DLC of Black Ops 3. Although I suppose Richtofen was in the giant, right? Anyway, as far as the rest of this graveyard is concerned, there is no names on any of these headstones here. They're basically the models from Origins, or at least the Origins in Zombies Chronicles. And you can see they're just chilling here. No names, no real details to any of this stuff. But uh, we do have this little house over here, although I can't go to it because that is outside of the sun volume and everything turns white. And lastly for here at spawn, I just kind of want to check this out. If we hop on through this door before actually doing the ritual, uh, yeah, so we can see that the teleporter wall thing is still here. And if we go to the side a little bit, we can actually take a look at it. So it's this like 2D plane here. And it seems like it's made up of two different textures. So there's like one that goes over it and creates that animation. And then there's the flat texture behind it uh, that is creating the picture. And lastly, here at spawn, if we look above us, there's a very weird detail here floating in the sky. If we get real close to it, we can see is this like random like chunk of blue stuff. I don't know if this is supposed to be 115 just chilling here in the air or if it has some other purpose, uh, but it's uh, it's definitely here. All right, it's time. Let's do it. I'm going to go ahead and hop on up. Let's see. Can we actually walk on the staircase? Kind of. I'm clearly partially in the ground, but we do have collision here. And going to the left here, we have a little like shed. It seems like not much going on inside of it. And collision ends like right around here-ish. There we go. And if we go to the right instead, we can go on to the front door and walk right on through it and see that, well, the interior, it's very empty. Yeah, there's no modeling to it. There's no furnishing or anything like that, but the layout of the house does exist like it has a, a decent layout to it there's even this little area down here to the basement which itself of course i mean no modeling again but it is here it exists and by the looks of it this little room over here was supposed to be a staircase because if we look up above us it goes to an area up here to the second floor which wraps around all the way over here to in front of these windows big open rooms that have no modeling to them and you can actually kind of like see out of the, the building in some places like here and if we go down the hall this way this very dark hallway well i mean it ends there's not much here at the end but this one door right here if we go on through it samantha's bedroom which of course is fully modeled it's kind of sick actually and i think this also is the same modeling for the room on Kino, at least in Chronicles, this is, is pretty much identical. And as far as the wall by here for the Tommy gun, well, for one, it doesn't have a magazine, which is strange. I think it normally does. But if we no clip towards it, uh, we, we can't we can't use it, of course. It's not an interactable thing. You can't buy the Tommy gun here. Very unfortunate. But uh, here is the rest of the room. And other than this game of chess that Samantha seems to have been playing with her teddy bear, we do have this map on the floor as well, which I think now, after some some thought, I believe this is Origins. Although, please tell me if I'm wrong again, but as far as I can tell, this is Origins. This is the same map that we saw in Kino der Toten when we were doing the outside of that map. 
in those floating rooms, those teleporter rooms. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's Origins. That's like Excavation Center. That's like the area behind Excavation Center, and that would be like church, right? And then that is supposed to be the tank path, maybe? Yeah, it's clearly like an early drawn up version of it. In fact, it might actually have some meaning and development. This might have been like an actual drawing of the map, but perhaps it's just here for fun, right? I mean, in the ending cutscene, Eddie and Samantha are sitting around this, playing their toy soldiers, and obviously that's the reason that it is here. But I'm wondering whether it was made specifically for that or if it is some other asset, some other drawing that the devs actually made and decided to use for this as well. While we're in here, we do have a few more Easter eggs to check out. Right here, we got the little toy, uh, like, spinner dance thing. I don't know what they're called. But this is the same thing that you can find on both Derizendraka as well as for that little model right there, Samantha, you can find on Ascension in, in Chronicles. We also got the monkey bomb chilling up there. Love that. And if we turn around towards this direction, we see a book. And in this book is a whole bunch of numbers. I have no idea if this is a cipher, and if it is, it is a very, very long cipher, but here's a look at this, and uh, maybe something will pop up on screen if I do find anything about it, but if not, let me know down in the comment section if you know anything about this. To me, it's just a bunch of numbers. And that's pretty much it. We got some toy soldiers here that they were playing with in the ending cutscene, and of course, the gramophone. Let's go ahead and hop on out of this building and check out some more stuff. But before I do, I'm going to take a sip of the coffee because, of course, I have my coffee with me here this morning. I hope wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself because I do like myself a bit of revelations. I'm going to tell you what. So I'll be honest. I did not play a ton of Black Ops 3 zombies back in the day. I play a decent bit more now than I did back then, actually. Especially with custom zombies, obviously. Buying a PC for me just opened up like a whole new world. But I will say that Revelations is probably one of my favorite Black Ops 3 maps. And I know that's in contrast with a lot of you guys who are probably going to say it's either Shadows or Gorod for you. But for me, it's Revelations or Zetsubo, which I know, I'm different. But there's something just awesome about Revelations. It's a trip down memory lane. You get to see things like Origins over there or Kino way over there. And for someone who idolized Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, this map just kind of felt at home to me. Although, obviously, right, being Black Ops 3, it, uh, it's a little bit different. But I do like Revelations quite a bit. And if you do too, leave a like on the video down below. It helps me out a ton. And of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. I'm gonna hold down E to override the Corruption Engine because apparently you can do that from the middle of the air. Although it seems like it immediately turns off because I'm out of the area. Interesting. All right, it's time. Let's go ahead, hop away from spawn. We're going towards Shangri-La in the air. Oh my God. So let's start simple. We got a window here on the left. Let's go ahead and hop into it. And it looks like it's literally just a very dark cave. A little area for zombies to spawn around the corner, but not very much. And on the other side, I'm assuming it's pretty much the same thing. And it looks, I mean, it looks a little bit more detailed. It's kind of more like temple-like, uh, but yeah, not much going on here. Although I just noticed here on the ground, the trap for that, the spike trap that is normally on Shangri-La is actually still here. At least the modeling is for it. Although obviously it doesn't work. Of course, this is normally a direction that you can go in Shangri-La, right? It's not normally a window. It's normally a pathway to the next area of the map. Kind of cool to see that some of that modeling is still there, even though like the rest of this part is completely different. And continuing onward, we got this window right here, which is another very dark hallway. Nothing very interesting in it. And across the way, I believe it's also the same kind of deal. Although this one, it, it's a little bit more interesting because it has this like second hallway back here. It has this one here and another one back there with like uh, a mine shaft looking support. I suppose that makes sense since a lot of mining happened at Shangri-La. Although, in the actual map, of course, it didn't happen here. It happened below us. But uh, I guess kind of cool to see that there as well. And to our right, we have this window, which is just a little green vegetation here on the other side. And I believe zombies spawn right over here inside of this, like, little temple area. And across the way on the other side, we got this window as well, which looks almost identical. So, obviously, the vegetation and stuff here is different. But the spawning system here is exactly the same. A little place for zombies to spawn here around the corner behind this, uh, this like, vineage hidden away inside the temple. They come on out, 
into the window. And here is a little look at this area from above, and man, oh man, is it beautiful. Black Ops 3 is not my favorite game gameplay-wise. I mean, it has some fantastic storyline stuff in it, but, I mean, you gotta say, this is just, I mean, it's, it's immaculate. And before continuing onward, there is a lot of interesting details here. I just wanted to show you. We got some of these Apothecan guys chilling here. This is what they look like up close, and man, do they have a really gross tongue. We also got one of these little orb things, which I think are the same, kind of the same as the ones on Buried, although they, they look different. But like the staff that holds the ball is pretty much the same, so I think it's supposed to be modeled after that, even though it uh, looks quite a bit different here on Black Ops 3. And of course, we got the top of the temple here, which we go inside of. It looks almost identical to the top of the temple in Shangri-La when we check that out in Outside Chronicles. So uh, take a look at that video if you're interested to see more of that kind of stuff. And lastly, we have these pillars here, which of course are part of a wall that uh, would have extended, I suppose, over there as well. It's because, of course, Derizendrot is right below us. So there is a connection to all of these areas all together, well, I, I suppose, other than other than the buried thing. I don't, I don't know why this is here. All right, onward through the door, which also, it turns out, you can buy the door anywhere in between these two sections. Well, let's go ahead and continue onward. We got a window right here to hop on into and show that it is extremely boring, so let's continue. But we do have a bunch here to take a look at. We have this massive room right here, the shrine for our characters. Man, oh man, is it one hell of a shrine. We also got the mystery box, which is nice. Always love that. And we got two windows. We got this window over there and this one here as well. Let's hop into it. I'm assuming there's not much going on. Just a little place for zombies to spawn, although it's bigger than I thought it would be. There's also some like weird lighting effects going on here. But yeah, just a little dirt tunnel with a whole bunch of ambient light. I'm assuming the other one is exactly the same. And it, it yeah, it looks pretty much identical. And if we look above us, we have a massive opening to just go ahead and hop on out. We can take a look at what that looks like. It seems like they use some kind of effect here to like up the contrast and brightness around every single one of these holes. This could also just be like the source, right? That could just be a circle that is the source of the light that comes through this. Because there's some like some god rays going on when obviously, of course, if we go above us, there isn't any light up here. It's very dark. So moving on from that room, we got this one up. Here, some more DE to take a look at. So I think there's not much to actually see in this, at least in this part of the area, but if we go ahead and hop through this door, there is. So starting at the back, we got this window to go ahead and hop on into, and it looks very, very much alike some of the windows in DE. It actually looks identical to that one area that we've checked out, although... I mean, not quite, right? There's some more extra modeling in here than there was in DE. And as well, when we turn around, we can see that, well, I mean, yeah, we can see right through the map. And we also got this window over here, although it's much less interesting. It's just a little hole carved into rock for zombies to spawn in. And so let's go ahead and move on from that. All right, so normally in DE, right, this is where Jug is through this direction, although it looks way different in the actual map. Like, I think this is like a flat wall. But if we go through it here, we can see on the other side, of course, there is no Jug. There is no continuation here. It's just dead ends with a little bit more floor left from the interior stretched out here, but uh, that's about it. And if you go out here where we do that that summon demon corrupt engine thing, I always called them rituals. I don't I don't know if that's a bad way to call them. But yeah, here where the rituals are, if we look up, of course, we can see the clock face that is from DE as well, just chilling here. It looks like it's like stamped up against a tree, kind of kind of strange. And past it, right there, is Kino. Which look at the entrance to Kino, dude. This is kind of cool, man. It's completely custom. For this map, this is not what the entrance to Kino normally looks like at all, which check out my outside Kino video if you haven't already. But yeah, crazy, man. And I think you can even walk on it here. Yeah, look at this. It's got collision. Well, I guess some collision. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. And there's even like, look at this. We can even go in here. Sick. And with that, I think it's time for us to hop on into Kino. So let's do that. Open up the door and move on into the theater which this is by far my favorite part of Revelations. It's my favorite place to train. It's the favorite place atmosphere-wise, at least for me, because Kino has so many good memories. And also, look at how open it is here. Fantastic. 
So starting things off strong, we still have these zombies in these like frozen containers here outside the map that are you know, super, super creepy. And if we go over here to this side towards this window, we see that it connects back to DE. Although if we look above us, we'll find out that it, it really doesn't. It, it does not have any kind of connection back to the area. I mean, that's DE up there and oh my God, there's a blue box down there. Wait, what is this? Yes, we got these two blue objects chilling down here. Not exactly sure what their purpose is. Obviously, if they were for teleporters, there'd be four of them. Not really sure. It might be some kind of dev thing. I know there's a thing called dev cubes, right? That like store commands, but I don't think that's what's going on here. So let me know down in the comment section if you have any idea, because I'm a little bit lost. And also down here are the doors. So yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, they're just stored here right under the map right where they were before after being used. And if we go over onto this side as well, we see another one as well. So it looks like that's the same for all of these doors here in DE. It's just right below the spot where it was when you bought it. But yeah, back to Kino here. The next thing I wanna check out is beyond this door. And of course we saw the front facade of the theater. So it kind of hints that there's more here, but I don't think there is. If we go ahead and hop through the, the wall, we see that there definitely is not and in fact it doesn't even line up with the front of the theater here as you can see so yeah not exactly correct and continuing down here towards the stage we got a window on either side to check out let's go ahead and hop on into this one first looks like just a little area for zombies to spawn back here come around the corner in the flooded room uh but yeah not exactly anything too interesting as far as the modeling goes and on the other side, if we hop on into here, same kind of deal. This one is even more barren and even smaller. But coming on up to the stage, we see some very interesting things. So first of all, if we take a look through this window right here, we can see there's like a bunch of reels and stuff, right? And eh, yeah, not too interesting, right? A place for zombies to spawn. It's nice and open. It's cool, but there's not exactly anything too crazy going on back here. But if we hop on out, and we go over here towards where the staircase normally leads up, right? To our right is the window that is normally there, right? And if we hop on into it, we can see it's pretty much the exact same room. And what I'm pretty sure is happening here is this room was copied and pasted over here for this window and then remodeled, right? Changed up, obviously, right? The floorboards look different and some of the modeling inside is a little bit different. But it's basically the exact same window. I think they just wanted to use the one that was over there in the original map and then put it inside the map for actual function, right? Because I don't think there normally is one here on Kino. Oh, wow, you can actually you can actually walk up here. There's collision this time. And I think in Zombies Chronicles, there wasn't. Not that it matters all that much. Although, wait, there's a window back here. Or at least a room. I, I, I think, do zombies spawn in? I'm guessing zombies spawn back there and come on down and out here. Okay, that makes sense. That would also explain why there's collision up there as well. So cool, 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 cool. Oh, and also right here on this chair on the stage is a piece of paper with a whole lot of writing on it. I don't know if any of it is actually legible, but here's a nice zoomed in version for you guys. If you're interested, you can try and take a read, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. A soul alone can follow the path. Wait, that's that's Mob of the Dead though. We're, we're in Kino, why is that there? But there is a hole up there in the wall that I do want to check out. So let's go ahead, hop on into it. Looks like we just got a big old open room that, wait, whoa. No way. The stairs are here. That is sick. Okay, so obviously they're not textured, but they do have collision, clearly, as I'm walking on top of them. And they do have sound to them too. They sound like that metal that they normally do in Kino. That's, that's awesome to me, man. They normally, of course, in Kino, they go out this way and then in here is that like control room area that would then connect over, uh, well, downward towards like the alleyway. I'm assuming this exists because the, like the way that they created this map is they took Kino and then just started deleting chunks of it and assets of it, and textures, right? So the textures of the stairs here probably just don't exist at all on this version of the map, but the collision is still here since this room is still here and they didn't delete that. Uh, but we have this area too. Uh, where am I? Yeah, now it looks like I accidentally ended up in a different window area, which connects to two places actually, right here towards the front desk where another one of those jump pads is. And it also goes through towards, uh, not there, towards here, towards this window that zombies come out of. 
So uh, yeah, kind of kind of cool to see. This isn't normally obviously in Kino, but uh, this staircase thing, freaking awesome, dude. Anyways, hopping back up in here, let's go ahead and continue onward. We got another one of these windows across the way, so let's check it out. This looks pretty cool, actually. There's a staircase here, and this is like parts of Kino that we don't see in Kino, right? So let's just check it out. Let's go ahead and go up these staircase. It seems it goes nowhere, the staircase. It, uh, it, it goes to absolutely nowhere, and it has another door, though, which does lead somewhere. Okay, so this is like a little balcony area. I guess, I, I didn't really know this exists, it's very dark in here. Uh, but yeah, it's that balcony area up there I, I never really paid attention to. And moving on past that, up these stairs, we got another window which looks kinda cool. It's very thin back here. Looks like another, uh, placeholder newspaper. But, uh, as far as the modeling, we can just walk through all of it and there's nothing really unique in here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and move through this door. Let's just see, is there anything on the other side of it? No. And further on, we have, of course, well, what would have been Pack-A-Punch, but of course, I mean, in, in Revelations, it isn't. But yeah, the, the theater room, right? Above us, we have a little open space here. Let's just go ahead and take a look at it. Not exactly interesting. And we have also a window right here, which looks really strange. It's probably one of the weirdest windows we've seen so far. This really does feel like we're in a completely different dimension. In fact, it actually kind of feels like the crazy place in a way. Like this texture here. I don't I don't know if I'm going crazy, but uh, really weird. Ooh, and on the board we got some physics. Look at that stuff, man. Look at that. Got a few wave functions. There's a tensor right there. Simple harmonic motion, a little bit. The quantum simple harmonic motion. I mean, nothing is simple about quantum, let's be honest. All right, anyway, enough of that. I'm sure that's boring everyone. So I think... The rest of this theater is is pretty much done. I don't know if there's anything else here. I mean, there's this door, but this just goes back up to here, right? There's not anything really all that interesting this way, I don't think. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next area. All right, let's go ahead and hop on out of here. And before we do... Oh, God. Oh, so that's how that works, huh? But as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a jump pad teleportation, here is a nice look at Kino from above. Of course, right over here is where DE is as well. So there's a look at that. It's just a bunch of mountains and stuff, and it's carved into that, it looks like. And we got the massive building of Kino here that's just chunked on into that as well. And can you stand up here? No. No, you cannot. You fall right through the ceiling. All right, so here we are in Verruck which I think there's a ton of windows to check out right here, starting with this one. It's not very interesting, really small, just a nice little area, and there's this over here. Okay, never mind, it is kind of interesting. Wow, look at this, and there's a red wall here too. Clearly not textured correctly, but this connects over here to this window as well. So that whole area is connected, which I think it might have been in, in Verruckt, although I could be wrong about that. And if we go through this door right here, We'll see that it is an actual door, it's the other side of this one. And if we look to the left here, through this very green looking window, this just leads out towards what would have been the courtyard, although obviously is clearly not the courtyard. In fact, I think it's like Shinonuma, isn't it? Like, like as far as this hut right here, like this is clearly a hut from Shinonuma, right? Oh dude, and I just noticed right up here, this fountain, right, obviously is the fountain for Verruckt, and on top of it is the MG42. Which, if you don't know, in Verruckt, and if you watched my outside Verruckt video, there's an MG42 chilling underneath the map. And you can see right here, it's just like impaled on top of the weather vane here. So that is awesome. What a tribute. Back inside the map here, there's some more things we need to check out, such as this window right here. Just a, oh, all dead. Oh, wow. Very creepy. Okay. Not much going on here, though. Just a nice little place for zombies to spawn. Some really weird like texture clipping uh but nothing too interesting as far as the model but we uh we have some baked beans that's nice and before going up the stairs if we go through this door right here we'll find out that there is actually a little room here i'm not sure if this is because this was a window area in the original verruckt or not i'd have to go back and check so uh perhaps there'll be some text on the screen yeah like that text right there that that right there that'll tell you but yeah, it looks like there is an extra room here that was completely unused for this version of Verruckt. 
And moving on up the stairs by the window door door. It's a door. It's the stairs. It's debris. Why did I say window? But up here, we got some cool things to check out. Of course, we have a shield part. Sick. And we have a window here. We hop on into it. We can see the rubble, the fire, the smoke, and a massive open area here with some really weird, like slightly transparent textures. Kind of cool, man. And of course, to the right of that, we have this little area, which we did check out in Outside Verruckt as well, and it looks pretty much the same, and we do still have that little attic area, although it is quite a bit different than the one that was on Verruckt. And we also have this area out here, so let's just go ahead and hop on out. I think in Verruckt there was like a guy sitting in a chair, like a skeleton, right? It seems like that is not the case for this version, although we do have a lot of the same modeling out here, a whole bunch of debris, and if we hop on out, we can take a look at what that would look like from outside, which, yeah, it, not not great. All right, buying the next door, going over here to the right. We got another window, and oh my, okay, so we got like a flipped over bed, it looks like, a whole bunch more fire, and a door here, a partial door at least. What is this? It's like, a, it's like another mattress, isn't it? Or maybe it is a door. On this side, it looks like a door. On this side, it looks like a mattress, so I guess take your pick. Yeah, we can go through it, and on the other side is the little balcony here. So that's actually awesome. It has full collision, we can walk on it all, and we can fall off of it too. And I mean, since we're here on this balcony, I might as well see. Can I go ahead and just like, huh, hop on over to this balcony here as well? There's of course another window location, so zombies spawn somewhere outside here. And it looks like it connects to a bunch of windows, actually, so it connects all three of these windows that are along the outside here. This balcony just wraps all the way around so zombies can spawn wherever the heck they do out here and decide to go to whatever window they please. Oh my, and look at this. You can walk all the way around here too. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe not all the way around, but uh, yeah, this is by where the jump pad is over here. So back inside the map here, I did kind of want to check out is there anything inside of these like containers here? And as it turns out, there is not. There's nothing at all inside of them, and I'm assuming that's going to be the same in Zetsubo whenever we get to that, but kind of cool to see. And above us as well, we hop on up here, we can see that there is a bit of an attic. Actually, not just a bit of an attic, it, it is a very large attic. We can walk around in it. In fact, there's a massive amount of space up here. Really cool to see, man. And, and look at this, too. You can walk on the top of the entirety of all of this. It even goes up here to the roof. This little area here with a balcony overlooking the courtyard. And we have this little room up here, which was also in Verruckt as well. And you can, like, look out these windows, too. So, I mean, really cool, man. Lots of, uh, lots of space up here. Lots of things to explore. Woo! What am I on top of? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why that barrier is there. Although it does lead to a pretty cool waterfall up here. Uh, that I don't think we can walk on. Yeah, eh, not not really, no. But we can kind of get inside of it here, at least, and at least with some no-clip as well, we can go ahead and go on down it into the pool down below us. Nice little, nice little refreshing swim. Although it doesn't look like your guy actually swims, which is strange, considering, like, on Nocturne and Toten, for instance, you can even drown. But you can't, it seems, on Revelations. So up top, back inside the map, there's a few more things to check out. Just some fiery looking windows like this one right here. Place for zombies to spawn, but nothing too interesting. And I think the same can be said about this one if we hop on into it. Pretty much the same kind of deal. It looks like a ruined little like room in this asylum. And then of course we have the power room, which, uh, well, it's not exactly much of a power room anymore, but it does have a window here. We hop on into it, it leads back towards what would have been more of a rock towards like the MP40 right down that hallway. And like the STG, I suppose, would have been like right here, right? But there's not much going on here. The showers aren't here like they normally are, and there's not much of this that is from the normal Verruckt. But yeah, pretty cool to see, man. So that Verruckt would have continued all the way through to here, but of course, that's all gone now. And all that's left is this ruined area here. And if you'll remember from outside Verruckt, we found that behind this door, there was a massive U-shaped area that connected back to the kitchen. And it turns out if we go through this door, well, I mean, it doesn't exactly connect. But the space does exist. It is here in Revelations, right? I think this is that space, right? When you go through this door, which is normally not a real door, right? It's just like a fake door like this one right here. It goes out and you have a little area 
back here. It was like an empty looking room that I think was from the campaign, but it looks like they made good use of that here for Revelations. They filled that in and that's where this jump pad is right here. And lastly, let's go ahead and hop on out here into the courtyard, and I want to check out this area to our right. If we hop on over this fence, we'll see that this whole place is pretty well, pretty much the exact same as Verrupt. So, like, down here, for instance, here is the spawn room. We can see that the area is all here, although a lot of the walls and stuff are just completely deleted. But we do have, like, space back here, for instance, that wraps around, and normally right here would be a staircase, and... Well, that's gone, but it is really cool to see that there is a bunch of unused space here that was from the original Verruckt, and it looks like they just basically deleted a whole bunch of it, probably to save on resources. And if we go out down this tunnel here, there is no collision, so I have to no-clip, but you'll see it doesn't exactly lead anywhere. In Verruckt, there was like a big old patio area here, but obviously in Revelations, none of that seems to exist. All right, I think that's enough of Verruckt for now. I do plan on fully comparing the original World at War Verruckt with BO1 Verruckt, as well as all of Black Ops 3's Verruckt's versions, which is, well, I guess two of them, right? The uh, Chronicles and this one. And if you're interested in seeing that, let me know down below in the comments. It's going to be part of a new series called Evolution, which I did just start with the evolution of Nocturne Toten. So, you know, check out that video if you're interested in that. But all right, it's time to hop on over and move on to Mob of the Dead. And inside the cafeteria here, we got two windows on either side. Normally, in Mob of the Dead, they would go out to the exterior, and there is a little walkway here. It seems, on this version in Revelations, all there is is the walkway. There is no outside portion, and the other one on this side as well is pretty much identical. But we do have the infirmary to check out, which normally goes up to a staircase, right? To the infirmary up above us. But it turns out here, uh, the staircase is completely gone. In fact, it, all we have is a little area for zombies to spawn around the corner, and that's it. We do have this door, though, but through it, nothing at all. But we do have this door in that same space, and through it, goes towards this side of the prison. Which, this is not normally here. I think this is completely constructed just for... Revelations? This is not in Mob of the Dead as far as I understand. Yeah, normally in Mob of the Dead, this is very different. But if you want to see an in-depth comparison of that, again, let me know down in the comments section because I do really want to make Evolution a full series. And here to the left, normally this door goes somewhere in Mob of the Dead in Revelations. Oh, there's a room here. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. I thought it would be the same as the other side, but it seems like there is an actual little room here. Although it does go nowhere, it seems to cut off very quickly. But, uh, but cool that it's here, at least. And opening up the gates, here is the main area of the prison. So in here, immediately, we got a window over here to check out, as well as on the other side. This one, it doesn't seem too interesting. Not exactly much modeling to it at all. It just kind of looks like the tunnels. And on the other side over here, uh, this one pretty much looks the same. <laughs> it's the same kind of deal. Looks like it's part of the Alcatraz tunnels, although obviously it, it clearly isn't. Like, I mean, as far as, like, its location... It's a little bit off. And then over here, opposite of the cafeteria, we can see the Alcatraz seems to end right here. There isn't anything on the other side of this wall. But yeah, this is the end of Alcatraz. There is no more here to uh, Mob of the Dead. Seems like they cut it off here, but they do have a little room back here. I'm guessing that's probably where the zombies spawn and come on out to that window. But there's nothing interesting, I don't think, in any of these prison cells. And I've been checking... A lot of them, because man oh man, is there a lot of them. Oh, let me out! Let me out! That was awesome, imprisoned for his hideous war crimes. Oh! Even the damned glimpse Al's hat? Time to time. I didn't know that was there. That shows you how much I've played Black Ops 3, because I'm assuming all of you watching this video probably knew about that, but I really did not. That's that's kind of cool. I w Does that have effects? I don't know. I'm going to have to look this up after this. So we got a couple directions to go here. First, this says it goes to No Man's Land, but obviously if we go through this door, this is not No Man's Land. It's Generator 3, and on the other side we have the exact same sign pointing inwards. So this is basically where that like middle section on Origins is, but obviously instead here it's Mob of the Dead. The direction I want to go is up through here into the infirmary, which is completely different than the infirmary in Mob of the Dead, by the way. I don't know if you ever noticed. But in this section of the infirmary that I guess maybe we just never got to check out in Mob of the Dead, it's got two windows. 
right here and behind this one, it's just a little place for zombies to spawn. A nice little wheelchair, and I'm guessing on the other side, it's pretty much the same. Just a small little room. Ooh, a little 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 hallway here for zombies to spawn in. But uh, other than that, there's not much. Oh, there's a cipher here. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a long cipher. I don't know if it's solved or not, but uh, I'll put the solution here on the screen if it is. Uh, kind of cool. And moving on from that, we go up through the tunnels here towards Origins, but we do have a window location. We might as well hop on out and see what it looks like. Just uh, a little barren land here for zombies to spawn in. Nothing too interesting. What is that, though? I kind of want to see. Eh, it's just a rock. Ooh, but you can walk even down here towards, like, on top of the jump pad. So uh, I, guess, I guess that's kind of cool. Can I fall in? I can. Nice. But moving on from that past the KN44 wall by, we have this window over here, which has a cool little Easter egg in it. At first glance, it doesn't look too interesting, right? But you'll see right here on the ground is a sign that says Living Stone Mine, which is kind of strange, right? I'm guessing Living Stone is referring to 115, right? So this is a 115 mine, which I guess Origins did have. Origins did mine a lot of 115. I mean, as did a lot of Zombies maps, I suppose. But yeah, here it is, just chilling outside the map, which I don't think you can even really see it from inside the map. Well, I guess you kind of can, but you got to get at a very particular angle. And here we go, up to Origins. Here's the excavation site in all of its glory here in Revelations. There's not much to check out around it, I don't think. I'm assuming most of this stuff doesn't exactly have collisions, and there's barriers around most of it. But... There is some areas like this one right here, which I think is a, a place for zombies to spawn. And that right there itself is a window. And right on over here, we got the same kind of deal. Just a little place for zombies to spawn on the scaffolding. Pretty much the same as the other one. They can come around the corner, and I can fall right through the map. Yeah, coming on down the stairs here, we're towards Generator 3. We should have a few windows to check out, like this one here which was in Origins, and it looks pretty much identical, actually, to the one in Origins. Kind of cool. And over on the other side, by where Speed Cola normally would have been, we got two windows over here to check out. There's this one right here that just goes out to a little area here for zombies to spawn, and there's even a tunnel, actually, that would have led down to Mob of the Dead, but uh, clearly doesn't. And as for this one right here in the middle, again, a little area for zombies to spawn here above the trench and I don't know if they get a decision here they might be able to go to that window or jump on down here but I'm not entirely sure about that now before moving on from this area of origins there's a couple cool things I want to point out and one of them is the fact that the flogger is here from Shino Numa it seems like Shino Numa was kind of just sprinkled into all the other maps because they didn't end up making an area for it, like specifically. Verrucked had a little bit of Shinonuma in it, and a little bit of Shinonuma is chilling here as well. And if we look up over here above the excavation site, we can see the remnants of a building, which I think is supposed to represent the one that's over near Jug, where the footstep is, although none of this... Oh, it does have collision. <laughs> Never mind, I was about to say none of this has collision, because normally all these rocks floating seem to not have collision, but this one, this one does. Cool. Yeah, it seems like actually all these rocks here around Origins, or at least these ones on this side, do have collision, which I've been checking them out as we go. Like all of these ones, for instance, and even like the ones in the distance with that little house on it, none of them have collision. In fact, that house over there, for instance, I believe is just a 2D model. There isn't actual dimension to it, even though it looks like it is. If I go over there, I'll be outside the sun volume, though, so we can't really get a good look at it. It'll just be all white. Anything interesting in the bunker? No. No, nothing interesting in the bunker at all, it looks like. Other than a chair that's just pointed at the wall. So, in Outside Origins, we found out that there was a bunch of trenches that were mostly unused. You couldn't really see them very well from most places inside the map, and there was no way to get to them. And they were right here, on the other side of Generator 3, and it turns out, here in Revelations, we got a door that kind of leads to them. If I remember correctly, this is where it would have connected to. Like, this is the tank path that's right above here. And here on Revelations, we can go underneath what would have been the tank path through to the trenches, which are not the same as the ones on Origins. This is very different, but it's kind of cool. It's a little bit of a nod to those who know that this is an area on Origins, although here in Revelations, we get to explore it a little bit, but it is completely different. And here we go on down to the laboratory, or I suppose spawn, right? 
for those who play Origins a lot, which as we can see is very different here on Revelations. We got the generator here in the middle for a quick revive that would normally, I think, be in that corner over there, if I remember correctly. And this would be a staircase downward towards an area where uh, Maxis's brain is. But as we can see, instead, we don't have any of that. There is no downstairs section here, as it seems. There's pretty much nothingness down there. And as far as what's up here, well, it's it's quite a bit different than normal Origins. But if we go above it, we can see that the kind of outline structure of the top of Spawn is still there, right? That structure that we see in the intro cutscene of that foot stomping and dispersing our main characters in Origins. And here is a little look at Origins from above. It's probably one of my favorite places to be on Revelations, so props to it. I mean, it is a fantastic area. And of course, the map that it's modeled after is probably one of the best Zombies maps of all time. So here it is in all of its glory on Revelations. Turn it on and take a sip of the coffee. Man, there's something so relaxing about playing zombies, man. I, I can't put it together. I just don't understand, you know? Delicious. And last but not least, we got Nocturne and Toten. And something I wanted to point out is every single one of those ritual areas that we did around the map does actually have this beam of light that leads over here to Nocturne and Toten, connecting to one of these, like, structures, which I, I think are from Gorod. And obviously, of course, that power is the pack-a-punch situation, but before we do that... I think we should just take a look at Noct. So Noct itself does have a few windows, like this one up here, for instance. Although each one of them, I mean, they're not all that interesting. They kind of lead to like an area around. So like we could see like this leads to this area of Noct, which I think usually has like the sniper cabinet like right here, right? But yeah, most of it is just completely destroyed, as you can see here for this one. And if we go ahead and we hop on over this direction... We can go on down the stairs, and there's more windows here. There's this one, which leads to, like, a little pathway here that goes around. I think zombies spawn somewhere over here. But, yeah, it leads around the back of Nocturne and Toten here to the stairs, this, this playable area where this massive guy comes to land, which I think I think it's about time we just do that, right? Let's, let's hit the button. Got him. Oh my god. This creature talk about a deep throat. Okay, so first of all, let's just let's just let's just fly around a little bit. Is there anything going on in here? Okay, yeah, okay. So the pack punch is actually chilling in there. Makes sense. And where are we? Like if I if I leave if I go out here, whoa. This area looks insane. So we're in some kind of box, right? Obviously. Some like brick box here. If we go outside of it. Okay, so we're just below we're just below Noct, right? Because Noct is up. Noct is up here. Yeah, yeah, so here's Noct, right? And here's here's the serpent guy. And uh, we can take a look at his his throat here real quick. Which, oh my god, take a look at that. That is absolutely terrifying. But he doesn't have he doesn't have very much going on inside of him, right? There's no room inside of him itself. But then if we go below Noct or in Toten, we find all of this. Which is supposed to be the inside of that big dude, which actually, like, proportion-wise, it's not that far off, to be honest with you. Alright, so now I'm, I'm immediately wondering, like, can we go under the map and get to Pack-a-Punch without even summoning this guy? So that's what I'm gonna try right now. I'm gonna go ahead and do a big old fast underscore restart. We're just gonna tab complete. Beautiful! And we're just gonna go right for it. Turn on God mode. No clip! Maxis. Let's go over to Noct, and then it's right below Noct, right? So right down, right down here. We made it. Can we shoot these? Can. Who knows what the beast's digestive acid we a hundred percent can. All right. Ah, uh, but it doesn't drop. Really? Okay. Wait a sec. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. The pack of punch is here already, down, down where it's supposed to be. But it's also up in here. So it seems like the pack of punch, in, in its normal state, is always just chilling down here right where you can use it and i'm guessing when you when you shoot that guy with the with the ray with the with the with the electricity you zap him right i'm guessing that makes this pack a punch go away and it also allows this thing however it's scripted to be able to open up and and release the pack a punch down so does these do these work can i leave like is this gonna zap me out it is okay so that always works the trigger for that is just always there 
it's really crazy how you cannot see that at all but it's right under there so that's knocked right out there obviously right and it's it's right down there and it's gonna turn white here so i'm gonna cut the white part out but boom we're here so yeah i don't i don't know what kind of trick they did to to make this hidden so well but i mean it it really works i mean it's it's literally just a massive like brick enclosure but anyway let's go back into here i did do a quick restart again and yeah so the pack a punch is just sitting here and it says you got to turn on the power first so that's unfortunate obviously there is no power on revelation is at least no traditional power right the, the power is those engines then what is what is this model doing here like clearly this is just a model right like i can't there's no interaction with it it didn't say you must turn on the power or anything like that and it doesn't seem like there's collision at all with it right oh well i'm uh okay there is there is a barrier in here but as far as like with the actual pack-a-punch though like yeah there's no collision there's no interaction this is the real pack-a-punch this is the one that you actually interact with and that's just one chilling up there in, in whatever this is. I don't know, like a gallbladder or something, dude? All right. So here is the part of the video where we're going to go outside the sun volume, which means everything on the screen is going to turn white. And it, it, might, it might hurt your eyes. So if you're not interested in that, then this is your time to look away. But we're going to take a look at some of the stuff going on way outside the map. Like way out here, for instance. I mean, this like halo looking structure. And as you can see, the second we leave the sun volume, Everything turns white. This is what the map looks like. Yeah, it's uh, it's really bad when you're down there. But <laughs> up here, it's not too terrible. We can take a look here at like these houses, for instance. There's like a little house right here. Little house, chilling. I mean, we got some trees and stuff. Just some 2D trees, actually. It looks like yeah, that's that's definitely two dimensional. And then to my right, I was interested because I see this like 2D plane thing. Look at that. Yeah, so this little 2D plane has a bunch of 2D textures for rocks, but yet there are 3D rocks behind it. And that's kind of strange. Like there's even this right here, which is like a little forest chilling <laughs> right behind this 2D plane with more rocks in front of it. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure about that dev choice, but he has even more trees, or actually, they're like red spikes. Those are not, they don't look like trees, but it's very hard to tell, because obviously nothing really has normal color here. But yeah, all these objects look like they're 3D though. Like even even way out here, there's there's 3D objects just, just floating about. And then randomly scattered through, there's also these 2D planes that have objects in them. So it's like a mixture of both. And as we go towards the very, very back, it does look like this massive, like, slope thing is just a 2D plane with a bunch of these little, little textured rocks. But there is still 3D rocks very close to here, but they, they did a lot of the heavy lifting, clearly, with, with this, this 2D texture here. So, it begs the question, though, what about the star? We gotta take a look. And, man, we about to penetrate. Oh Lord! Oh wow! It's okay. So we're we're inside we're inside that star right now. This is what it looks like. So the entire texture of the star goes away, but it looks like this like illumination, this like ring that's going on around the outside does seem to stay. And I'm moving forward right now, going through it, and it looks like that illumination actually is kind of moving with me. And here I'm, I'm moving backwards now see what that looks like and we can see look at that it wraps around my screen so i'm assuming this is happening because this big old star in the sky is programmed to constantly face the player right or, or something along those lines so as i move through it it gets very confused and this like texture for it is right now just wrapped around me so when when am i going to break out the other side is what i'm wondering okay it's getting bigger it's getting bigger and boom, okay, there it is. Yeah, so here I am, I'm orbiting the star right now. And that light texture, that light, that lighting ring that we saw, I think is just the lighting that goes around the surface of it. Right, because you can see here as I orbit it that that light that kind of goes around the star here moves with me. And I think that's what was moving, perhaps, and not like the actual texture of the star itself. And here's a look at the very top of the star. So we can see the texture that wraps around it, this blue texture down here. It cuts off at the top. And now we're looking at that ring of light that goes around it. And it looks like it tries to stay like perpendicular to your camera. 
But while I was moving through it, clearly it, it really did not know how to do that. But look at this, dude. It looks like a black hole, man. It looks like in the middle, we got a black hole, and then this is like light that's orbiting around that black hole. This looks kind of sick. And then there's the map way down there. Let's fall through this. Let's just fall. Hey, look at that. It just constantly tries to orientate itself, make itself perpendicular to me. So it's always facing me. And it always has that massive, that beautiful looking outline. I guess until you get too far away from it like that right there. Oh my god. Oh, there's water. All right. Well, we found water, guys. You can drown in Revelations. I'm drowning. Oh my god. Hold on. We got to take off god mode. We got to take off god mode. Oh, that's third person. Okay, god mode's off. Are we going to drown? Yes. Sick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Revelations. And I hope you guys enjoyed, because I enjoyed this one quite a lot. There's a lot of really cool things to check out. And I mean, that big guy right there. I mean, this ending was very strong, let's be honest. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. And of course, subscribe so you can come back for more. Click one of the videos on the screen if you want to watch some more of my content. But if not, stay awesome. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.